welcome your neighbor in the name of Jesus. Tell them you are welcome. 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 Just lift up your hands. Father, we give you all the glory, all the praise in Jesus' name. Take your glory in this place. Come and do what you promised that you will do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's take our seats. Hallelujah. Thank you, present worship. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Amen. Are you happy? Yes, sir. Are you happy? Uh-huh. Ask your neighbor, are you happy? Are you happy? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I want to get into the word of God. Hallelujah. I want to teach you about something very, 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 very important. Amen. I want to teach you on how to pray. I, 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 I know you've been here since nine o'clock. Some of you since eight. You have been praying. But the problem is, as you have been praying since morning, the problem is you don't know whether you are praying the right way. Am I talking to you? Amen. That is the problem that many people have. Where after you pray, you don't even know whether you are praying the right way. And if you don't know whether you are praying in the right way, it means you can't even guarantee your answers. And now, I have, I've been a very, very prayerful person the greater part of my life. And one thing that I've realized is when you get to a point where you keep praying, and you keep praying and you keep praying and there is no answer. It gets very frustrating. And now, instead of you looking at prayerful people as your source of motivation, instead of looking at everyone who is prayerful as your source of motivation, you become so disconnected to anyone who is prayerful because in your mind, no one you know who is very prayerful is rich. So it kind of give, give you this idea that the moment someone prays, the more, the more they get poor. And it then places you in a position where you are actually scared to pray. You are too much for Amen. So I want to help someone today. Yes, Papa. Am I talking to you? Amen. I don't want to start feeling like I'm talking to myself already before I even go anywhere. Am I talking to you? Amen. Is this the right subject to teach or should I change it? I've got many things to teach you. Yes, Papa. Does someone want to know how to pray? Yes, oh, yes. Papa. Does someone want to know how to get their answers immediately? Yes, Papa. Does someone ha- want to know ha- how to pray and tomorrow you can experience the testimony? Yes, sir. God has taught me things that I want to teach you today. You will never hear them from anyone. Those things. You only hear them from Shekinah and Grace Synagogue. Oh, yes. So, as I teach you, I want you to listen. Amen. I want you to learn. Amen. Because from today after the service, if you apply these principles, my God, you are going to live a life of victory. Oh, yes. So, take your seats. Let's go to the Bible, to the book of Luke 11 verse 1. Luke 11, verse 1. Look at your screens. Just write it in your notes. Look at your screen. Now, it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. It came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. When he seized that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, Teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Uh huh. So he said to them, when you pray, when you pray, say our Father in heaven. Let's stop there. You know the prayer, but I want to stop there. 
The Bible is saying it happened that when he was praying in a certain place, he ceased. He stopped praying. And one of his disciples came and said, Lord, teach us to pray as John teaches his disciples to pray. And Jesus answered and said to them, when you pray, when you pray, say our father in heaven. Blah, 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 blah. So when you think of prayer at any moment, be it you want to repeat the same prayer, be it you want to pray another kind of a prayer, the introduction to that prayer is the destination of the prayer, our Father in heaven. Am, am I talking to someone? Amen. But before we get all worked up and deep and everything, let's start here. As he was praying in a certain place, so number one about prayer, prayer has got a place. Can you write that down? Prayer has got a what? A place. You have to have a place where you occasionally pray. You have to have a place where you pray more often than any other place. Am I talking to you? Amen. It's important for you to, to establish a comfortable place. That place can be a place of comfort, number one, because of its geographical location. It's a place where if you go, you feel comfortable because not so many people come and disturb you as you are praying. So number one secret about prayer is its geographical location, not spiritual. Geographical. You have to identify a place that is comfortable for you to go in there and pray. You have to identify a place that if you are praying, you know I can easily spend a certain number of minutes without anyone to come and disturb me. The Bible says when Jesus was in a certain place and he was praying, he ceased, he stopped. When he stopped, one of his disciples came and he said, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. So it shows you when he was praying, his disciples were not praying. They were listening to his prayer. Because they then identified that he stopped praying. That's why when he stopped praying, they went to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Because as he was praying, they were listening. And the reason why they were listening, and at the end of the day, they got motivation to go to him and say, teach us to pray, is because they identified that the way he prays and the way they pray are different. There, there has to be something that they heard from him that motivated them to go to him and say, teach us to pray. If Jesus was praying in the same way that these disciples pray, they were not going to be motivated. When they look at prayer, they would see Jesus as, 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 an, as a mentor. They would look at Jesus as their idol. They would look at Jesus as their example. They would look at Jesus as someone who can teach them something new that they didn't know about prayer. So when he was praying, they were not praying. They were listening to someone that they are motivated about when it comes yes. to prayer. And the Bible says when he stopped praying, they then went to him and said, teach us to pray as John teaches his disciples. Wow. And Jesus did not teach his disciples John's prayer. Uh -huh. That's why he said, when you pray, yes. when you pray, it means your prayer and John's disciples' prayers are going to be, decided to be different. Yes, you know how they pray, Amen. but when you pray, you say, our Father who is in what? In heaven. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, Papa. Sit down. So, prayer is got a what? A place. Tell your neighbor. Prayer is got a place. Not a place in a religious way. I'm not talking about a place in a religious way where if you are not at that place and you have traveled, you can't pray because you left the place somewhere. Don't be religious when it comes to the place. You can pray everywhere. Let's say your place of prayer is in your bedroom, but you have gone for a holiday or you have visited. You cannot then pray because you are far away from your place of prayer. And you say, I will pray when I go back to my place of prayer. That is being religious. You can pray wherever, but there is a place that carries more anointing. That is more saturated when it comes to anointing. Because you always pray there. So it's important to have a place of prayer. Amen. Tell your neighbor, it's important to have a place of prayer. It's important to have a place of prayer. Come on, tell three people, it's important to have a place of prayer. It's important to have a place of prayer. 
it's important to have a place of prayer. Now, place from here. You need to establish a what? A place. You need to establish a what? A place. I've got so many outers. My office, here, there. Almost every outer that is in my 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 my, my mountain is there are outers that are in there. But I feel more comfortable praying in my prayer room. In my prayer room, you have to have a place. When you identify a place that is comfortable for you to, 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 to pray, it places you in a position where when you are about to, to, to pray, you don't have to crank yourself before you can connect to the spirit. You get connected immediately because you are used to the place. So your physical or geographical location when it comes to prayer has got a contribution to your spiritual connection. Your physical, geographical location has got a contribution to your spiritual ground that you are going to cover. If you pray everywhere, you are going to find that every time you go and try and pray in, and, and pray in a new place, you are going to, to, to start to want to get used to that new environment that you are praying in before you are in the spirit. Your body will face a certain level of resistance every time you pray in a new place. It's because maybe the beds that are in there, you are not used to their sound. It's maybe you are, maybe you are, you are praying in a place where there is now more traffic than where you used to pray. It's maybe when you are praying, there is noise of certain kids. You are now used to pray, let's say, in your bedroom at 12 o'clock when everyone is asleep. Now you changed. You say, I want to pray in the what? In the dining. And it's in the afternoon. And kids are playing football outside. You then have to adjust face, face to the noise that is outside before you are connected to the spirit. So it's important to identify a place so that you get used to the status quo in the physical before you achieve anything in the spiritual. Amen. Am I talking to you? Amen. So a place has to be established. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. A place has to what? To be established. Number two, one important thing about prayer, number two, that I want you to understand is praying can someone be on the, on the scripture so that we... I, I, I've got a lot of scriptures today, so make sure you are there all the time. Number two factor about prayer is praying amiss. Is praying what? Amiss. If we can redefine it, we can say uh, praying, fire, firing blanks. Praying amiss. Praying missing the target. Every time you say you are praying, you don't realize you are missing the target. James 4 verse 3. James 4 verse 3. Look at your screen. You ask and do not receive. Because you ask amiss. You ask and you do not receive. You ask. But you don't receive. Because you ask amiss. That you spend it on your pleasures. So, when you go and say, Father, can I have this? God looks at the intention. Why do you want that which you are asking? If the intention is for you to be selfish with it or to prove a point to someone, God looks at that asking as asking amiss. He looks at it as a blank prayer. He looks at it as a prayer that should never be answered because of the motive that is behind the prayer. So Jesus here is saying, it's not that you are not asking. You ask, but amiss. <laughs> now, when you ask amiss, it means when you go and say, Father, can I have this? And the Lord does not give you because he's saying you are asking amiss. It will push you to go back into prayer the next time. To ask again. And you ask amiss again. And it does not respond again. 
And you go begging to pray at the third time to ask again. And the Lord is saying, she was still asking amiss. And now, God's answering will not be determined by how many hours or times you are going to prayer. What determines God to answer your prayer is the quality yes. of the prayer. No matter how many times you ask, if you are asking amiss, you are going to go and ask a hundred times. But as long as God is saying you are asking amiss, you are not going to receive. Because he says, you ask but do not receive. Power. So, James there is acknowledging. People are asking. And they are not receiving. And the reason why they are asking they are not receiving is because they ask amiss. And the thing about asking amiss, it will push you to continue to go back into prayer to keep praying about the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Now when you continue praying about the same thing over and over again, frustration will build. Yes. Are you here? Frustration what? Will build. When frustration builds, you will stop asking. And when you stop asking, you will never receive. And when you don't receive, you will think stop being a Christian. Stopping being a Christian is the solution. You ask, Amis. You ask, Amis. Munokumbira, but it's really blank. It's like writing a letter. And when God opens your letter to read it, he finds your letter like this. Blank. That's asking a miss. What you are saying in your prayer does not make sense. That's asking a miss. Asking a miss means you are filling your prayer with many words. Thinking by your many words you are going to impress God. But all those many ways when God is listening to them, they mean nothing. When you ask a miss, you find yourself, you keep asking. When you ask a miss. And when Paul is saying, you ask a miss, that's why you don't receive. Sit down. You ask a miss, that's why you don't receive. You ask a miss. Asking means praying. So you pray. A miss means in a wrong way. So you pray in a wrong way. That's why you are not receiving. So if someone can pray in a wrong way, someone can also pray in the right way. And if someone can pray in the right way, someone can pray in the wrong way. And according to that scripture, we can't determine whether someone has prayed in the wrong way or in the right way by merely listening to their words. We have to wait to see whether they receive. What determines whether you asked is whether you receive. Not, not the many ways. Amen. Yes. 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 Whether you are receiving wrongly or rightly, we will see whether you receive. If I say receive, you say I receive. That response can never be measured by decibels. Kadabazu. I think I'm getting too deep now. Yes. Hey, I think I need mature people to preach to. Are you sure? Yes, Papa. When I say receive, you say I receive. It's not measured in decibels. It's measured by receiving. Receive your marriage. I receive. Receive your business. I receive. Re, re, re. I, 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 I. <laughs> it's not how many times you repeat after me. It's not how loud you shout. You do not receive. Because you ask a miss. Or you ask a miss. That's why you don't receive. So whatever you ask God to give you and you don't have it. Here is your answer. You asked a miss. Amen. You ask what? A miss. A miss 
should not only be limited to you spending it like he said to your own pleasures. A means can also mean you praying, not in unison with the word of God. When you pray and you are praying something that is contradicting the word of God, you are asking a miss. Amen. When you are asking God what he has already provided for, that you just need to acknowledge that's in the word, you are asking a miss. When you are pushed in prayer, you, when you are pushed in prayer to go and ask again and again because you are not frustrated, you are being pushed to go and pray because of frustration, you are asking a miss. Your motivation of prayer should never be frustration. That's why Jesus said, men ought always to pray. Whether they are frustrated or not, they ought always to pray. Always. How many times should you pray? Always. So when a man who does not always pray, goes to pray, to ask, they are asking amiss. Because before you go and ask, there is a principle of prayer. Men ought always to pray. So if you look under the subheading, I miss, I've said a lot of things there Amen. that you need to highlight. Amen. You praying contradictory to the word of God. You praying out of frustration. You not always in prayer. Amen. You have always to be in prayer if you are going to er eradicate asking. I miss. When you don't always pray and now you want to go and ask God to do something, you will never create the right momentum in your prayer. Momentum. Prayer is like an aeroplane. When you, I, I don't know how, how many of you have ever been to the airport have, or have ever actually been inside the plane. When you get in there, they will tell you if you are going to check in, you, you need to be there 45 minutes before the, the, the plane goes. The 45 minutes is to prepare the plane. When you get in there and you are going up there, you are boarding the plane, it will be idling. If you sit by their wing, you will be seeing wings that are going in south and things that are, they prepare it before it takes off. I wait to say more to him from here when we go. So an aeroplane, a car is of the land. That's why a car does not need preparation. Because it moves on the land. But an aeroplane is of the spirit. That's why it travels faster than a car. That, why, that, that is why it can go to higher levels than a car. But look at its preparation before it goes to higher levels. It idles before it takes off. Before it actually achieves the actual assignment, it has to be run. The engine has to be hot. This has to be done. This has to be done. This has to be done. So some of you who Christians operate like your cars. You are just started and you go. But I want to tell someone, Christians are men and women of the spirit. If you are going to operate like a, a, like a spirit man, look at an aeroplane, how it is prepared. Look at how big the wings are. And listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. The bigger the aeroplane, the bigger the wings. Okay. Amen. If you are going to fly high, listen to me, brother. You need to make sure that you spread your wings. And the only way that you can spread your wings as a Christian is by consistent prayer life. Yes, yes Papa. Tell your neighbor, men ought always to pray. Men ought always Tell your neighbor, to pray. you have always to pray. You have always to pray. I can't hear you tell them again. You have always to pray. Sit down. So when you are asking a miss, when you ask a miss, it's a wrong prayer. When you receive after you ask, it's evidence that it was the right prayer. Now, your right prayer attracts God. Your right prayer attracts the presence of God. Attracts the voice of God. Amen. The opposite is true. Your wrong prayer can attract the devil. I'm going to name it. Danger in a wrong prayer. The danger that your wrong prayer has is it can attract Satan. You can find your vicinity being attacked by the devil. You can find your comfort zone being disturbed by the devil because of wrong prayer. Wrong prayer can attract demons. Wrong way to pray. So you have no room to pray in a wrong way. Because your wrong prayer can attract the devil. So you probably are experiencing the challenges you are experiencing. Not because you are not praying. But you have been praying a prayer that attracts the devil. 
After prayer, the devil follows you because of wrong prayer. But when someone learns to pray a good prayer, they attract the presence of God. Amen. Do you know there are people that if they are praying, God enjoys their prayer? Enjoying. I, I don't know if you're hearing what I'm saying. There are people that God can't wait to go and pray. He enjoys being with them because they've got good arrangement of words. Their prayer is not going to be able to do it. I don't know why I worship you. Oh, God, but why? But. Ah, 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 ah. Good, Papa. There are people who know how to pray that if they get into prayer, they introduce themselves properly yes. to God. They know He's our Father. Before they can say anything, they greet Him. How are you, dead? God enjoys prayers of certain people. Amen. And He's frustrated about prayers of certain people. Amen. There's a time that I thought she's kissing you. But after she's kissing you, what confused you means she began to worship you. Confusion in prayer. Do you think God will be there? Demons will follow you. I wish if this church could have many people like Vimbai. My God. Where did you come from? Ha! Che. Prayer! It's not what you just think. You can just go before God and kneel down and say, then it's done. <laughs> no. There are people that God can't wait. That they come into prayer. He enjoys their presence. He knows these people when they pray, they treat God like a friend. Yes. They trust God too much to curse him in prayer. Amen. They trust God too much to complain. They know he's too faithful. They know if my prayer is not answered, it's never God. It's, it's my side. Amen. It's always my side. He can't wait. When you learn to stop praying and miss, Sit down, brethren. When, when you learn to stop praying and miss, when you learn to stop praying in a misfiring way, you are going to realize that there is no need for you to spend 10 hours in prayer every day. Amen. When you continue praying and you don't receive answers, you end up being motivated thinking that it is spending more time in prayer that will make God hear you. So you end up punishing yourself, thinking God, by you punishing yourself, he will answer you. That's the danger of praying amiss. That's the danger of praying and you don't receive. You end up applying unbiblical principles. You end up thinking I have to be in pain for God to answer. I think I have to fast and be in pain so much. Fasting is good. But it's got principles in the right way of fasting. That God enjoys. And never getting yourself to a, a point where you are, you are actually a uh, 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 are putting your boat on the line, you've got ulcers because you are just living a life of fasting. Amen. God wants you to be happy. Amen. But when you don't pray in the right way and you don't receive, you will think that I need to spend more hours in prayer. Yes. Yet prayer is not answered by the hours you spend in prayer. Prayer is answered by the quality Amen. of the prayer. So many times I get into prayer, I told my wife, yesterday, I got into prayer, I think I was, I was laughing with my wife and I said that yesterday, ah, I think this is the earliest I've gotten out of prayer on a Saturday. Because normally I get out of uh, my, my, my Saturday prayers, early morning of Sunday, when I'm about to come to church, praying for you and doing this. So yesterday, when God had given me this revelation on Friday, I said I'm going to use this revelation for prayer and, and, and apply this principle, what God has taught me. I got into prayer around five. Around 10, I was out. And I was, went to my wife and I said, this is the longest time that, this is the shortest time that I've spent in prayer when I'm preparing to go to a service. Because when you master revelation, when you master revelation, listen to this. Revelation flashes away frustration. Revelation. 
The amount of time you spend in prayer is an indication of the revelation you are trying to achieve. The moment you get that revelation, there's no need for you to be in prayer. Amen. Amen. Yes, Papa. When you spend 10 hours in prayer, you are trying to hear God. Amen. So the reason why you are still in prayer in 10 hours is because God does not say what you are expecting. If God says what you are expecting in 5 minutes and you are waiting for him to speak in 10 hours, are you not going to go out of prayer? So you are spending 10 hours because you are praying amiss. Yes, Papa. Thank you. Now, I'm not saying go home and pray 5 minutes. I'm saying get out of prayer after you get the revelation. If it's still taking you 24 hours to get that revelation, spend 24 hours. Yes. Amen. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. There is danger in praying amiss. There is danger. Danger that you can pray and demons end up following you. Danger that you can end up hating prayer. Danger that you can end up looking at everyone who prays a lot and hate them. Rarely do you see people who pray a lot rich. Really? perception I think the more you pray, the more you attract problems. <laughs> and if you are praying in the wrong way, it's true. But if you learn what I'm teaching you today to pray in the right way, you are going to enjoy prayer. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? You are going to what? To enjoy. I want you to get to a level where you can't wait to go into your prayer closet. Amen. Am I talking to you? Amen. I want you to get you to a level where you can't wait to commune with God because you know him. Amen. You enjoy him. Am I Amen. talking to you? Amen. Am I talking to you? Yes. I want to push this so that we, we, we make sure we finish. Number three. Number three. I want to focus on the subject that I highlighted on praying. I miss praying wrongly. James 4 verse 2. James 4 verse 2. You're verse 3 to be verse 2. Uh -huh. Look at your screen. I'm not going to spend too much time. I've touched on praying in a wrong way. You lust and do not have. Or you ask. Lust means you desire to have this thing. So you desire to have this thing and you don't have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have. Because you do not ask. Because you do not ask. You are in prayer. You are not asking. You are not asking. You are not asking. You are not asking. The people that are being taught this thing are not heathens. They are Christians who are in church asking. And after they ask, he says, You do not ask. So, what is asking? You are not asking. Is it enough to say, No, no. What is. He is saying, You don't ask. To people who are asking. You do not have. Because you do not ask. <laughs> what are you asking God today? What do you not have that you asked God? You didn't ask. What, what is what? And, and if I preach Munyaism, you will stone me today because of this message. So I want to preach the word. You don't have because you don't ask. What do you not have that you asked? It's because you didn't ask. Power. Uh, you don't have because you don't ask. Amen. What is it that, that you don't have that you asked? It's because you did ask. Power. Now when you ask, and you, yet you didn't ask. When you ask, yet you did not ask. It's a wrong prayer. Power. When you ask, and yet God is saying you, you did ask. Okay. Better you collapse when you are sitting than when you are standing. Let me touch this matter again. You don't have, you people, just don't listen to me. Hear me. You don't have because you did not ask. My question to you is what is it that, that you don't have that you asked? 
Or what is that that you asked that you don't have? It's because you did not ask. Amen. And five lines. how you can eradicate not asking. Then those are And this What puts you in a position of asking yet you're not asking is asking in your own words. What makes asking not asking is asking in your own words. Your asking has to be done consistently with the word of God. If you ask and you are not consistent, if you ask anything that you don't know that is in the Bible, you are not asking. Amen. Whatever you ask, you have to know scripture in the Bible. <laughs> what? Listen to me. I want one person in Aruna Madra marriage. Sums are all. Aha. Stand daughter. And you say she's praying for a marriage. Amen. Now when you say, say God, I pray for marriage. God before he says you are asking. He looks for the scripture that you are meditating, that you know in the Bible, of a person who was never married in the Bible, who got married. If you say, I'm, God, I'm asking because it's month end and you are struggling on your rental, and you are thinking if there was a man in my life, he would help me. You are asking, but not asking. Your motive, your motive of asking, yes. come stand with me here. Come stand with me. Your pass, Papa. Your, your, your motive was of asking, Rodi, come. I think you are the easiest one. Two years. Oh, you yes. identify this brother in church and you say, if he marries me, yes. my rental problem is over. Oh, yes. If he marries me, people laughing at me is over. Now, your motive of prayer is you saw, Lord. You get into prayer and you say, Lord, look, it's month that I pray for marriage. Please, Lord, answer my prayer. God is saying you are asking, but you are not. Because you are praying because you know, Lord, you don't know the word. Ah, powerful. <laughs> ah, am I talking to somebody here? Yes, Papa. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, Papa. If there is a, a, a let, let's 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 now use her as a as a woman in a battle, and you are looking at Rodi as your wish, and Rodi is trying to take your life. Now you are pushed into prayer because your wish is about to kill you. You had a dream that your wish was coming to take your heart. Yes. To rip your heart out of your chest. Yes. Now you turn away from the wish and you go into a prayer closet to say, Lord, deliver me from my wish. The Lord will say, you are praying because you are scared. So you are asking, but you are not asking. Ha. Do you know anyone in the Bible who was attacked by the wish? And I delivered them. Can you put the word in your heart and in your mind and depend on the word like nothing else? Such that when you are praying, your mind is on the faithfulness of God based on the integrity of his word. Power. O Kadabasai. Am I talking to you? Yes, Papa. Based on the what? The integrity of his word. Because God is not faithful because he did something. He is faithful because he is faithful. If you learn to trust God based on his faithfulness, that the word said is faithful, he will never leave you nor forsake you and ignore the witch that is trying to kill you. Then you will be answered. Am I taking someone to pray in this place? Yes, Papa. Am I taking someone to pray in this place? Yes, Papa. Let's clap hands for them as they take their seats. Oh, yes. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Sit down. What also makes you trip, trip subject number three and is it? Praying what? Wrongly. Praying what? Wrong. What also makes your prayer to be wrong? It's the destination of your prayer. Not that you are not powerful, you don't know the word. Destination. Jesus said when you pray, say our father. So it's, it means the destination of your prayer is our father. I better destination in a deeper way. But don't wait. And this destination. There are more than six destinations of prayer. There are more than six destinations of prayer. Number one destination is you. The Bible says he who speaks in tongues edifies himself. <laughs> yeah. 
So when you speak in tongue, you are praying to you. Amen. We have got three levels of tongues. Tongues of men, tongues of angels, and tongues of the spirit. So if you pray in tongues of men, you are edifying yourself. You are not receiving because you are discouraged. So when you pray, you will be encouraged and you will receive. You are not receiving not because the answer is not there. It's in a spiritual bush. And it takes spiritual eyes to see it. But because you are demotivated, your eyes in the spirit are closed. So you can't see in the spirit. So when you pray in tongues of men, you are motivating yourself to see in the spirit. And you see a prayer answered a long time ago. So destination number one is you. So if you are asking God to do something, yet you are praying to yourself, God will not answer. Destination number two are angels. When Daniel went to pray for his 21 day fasting, he was not praying to God. He was praying to an angel. That's why an angel came and said, I came because you prayed. Amen. Amen. Destination number three is the Holy Spirit. When you pray in tongues of the Holy Spirit, you are not praying to God, you are not praying to Jesus. You are praying to the Holy Ghost. Destination number four is God who is on the throne. When you worship, when you worship, when you are in worship, you worship God who is on the throne. That's destination number five. When, number four. Destination number five. When you cast out devils, you don't cast out devils in the name of the Holy Spirit or of God. Jesus appears on the scene. Amen. Then the last one, destination, is demons or the devil. That's why same same bracket. tongues, a demon. And like I said, wrong prayer can attract demons. So you might not receive your answer, not because you did not pray. But the prayer that was supposed to go to God ended up in the hands of the angels. The prayer that was supposed to be in the hands of angels ended up in the hands of God. Jehovah Rapha, the healer. So if you go to Jehovah Yahweh, the provider, asking for healing, you are in the wrong department. God has got a government that is organized. It's got ministers. It's got this, it's got that. You have to know the names of God. What does Elohim mean? What does El Eloha mean? What does El Gipoa mean? What does Rafa mean? What does Yahweh mean? What, what, what does Eloha mean? What does, what does Nisi mean? What does Adonai mean? What does Jehovah Chuva mean? You can go to Jehovah Chuva looking for Jehovah Yahweh. You can go to Jehovah Yahweh looking for Adonai. That's why you hear them saying, Adonai, we worship you. Adonai. Because Adonai means Lord, Master. So you worship Adonai. You don't worship Yahweh. You ask from Yahweh. Muno mix some departments. My prayer and your prayers are in a good destination. Is it you? The destination of your prayer. You have been praying, but all the time your prayer is lending in the hands of a wrong destination. Jai bata bambere. Number four concept about prayer and Ibata Bija and Tiango it foot time frame versus quality. That's number four. Time frame versus quality. Time frame. By time frame, I'm talking about the time that you're spending in prayer. The time that you're spending in prayer. Do our prayers get answered because of the time we spend in prayer or because of the qualities? Because of the quality. How do you make your prayer a quality prayer? By filling your prayer with the word. By filling your prayer with the what? With the word. If you want to achieve the right quality and stop spending, I think I, I think here yeah, destination time and attend you so that I don't have to come back. I think you guys are very intelligent. You get it. Right. Destination. Prayer destination. Tati prayer good irwe ndepi. Time ya kune quality. If you don't establish the right destination of your prayer, you will spend more time in prayer. Hello? Amen. If you don't establish the right destination of prayer, you will spend more time. 
I want to give you an example of a phone. Who, who has got a phone? Can I have a phone? Thank you. All right, you will receive a testimony through this phone. If you have got a phone and you are trying to call someone, you, you don't just press any number. You open. And this is what you Okay, yeah, in a password. Thank you. You don't have secrets. Eh? Well done. Right. Where, where are the contacts? I struggle with phones. Just go to contacts. Brenda, I'm going to contacts in phone. Makose. Relax. Right. If you open your phone, there are contacts from A to Z. The person that I want to call, let's say, is at M. I have to take time scrolling. And by M, I have to take time scrolling. M, A. Wenda bana M, E. M, B. Wenda bana M, E. Wenda bana M, H. Pana na mama. Pana na mama. Pana mama. Pana mama. Ana. Pana mama. Deni. Pana mama. Nyasha. Pana mama. Njani. Pana mama. Besa. Pana. Ia da ufo na mama. Bagas. Boza da kuna Chicha njera kuona wa kuzo 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 no phone rama ibesa. Vaoruda kuti iwe yoka na wakuda kuti u u u uti ndi batiri one nye zeme investment. Waku phone rama ibesa. Tu vaku na matiri wongo chaga mama bagas. Amen. Vepana M chet. Vete A to Z M. Amen. Tu vuda establish a destination. Wau na mama bagas au chida prayer. Wau voting ting. You buy wapana mama bagas. You do is wapanze. We cannot be loud. Kuzo wau ni yaku ni rai re ukuseri. What press a dial and you listen whether it's ringing on the other side. And the beautiful thing about technology is it indicates to you whether it's ringing on the other side. Amen. And when it's ringing on the other side, the phone that belongs to Mama can be picked by Jody. You are too much, Papa. Oh yes, Jody. Jo, hello. If you don't know Jody's voice, oh, Jody, Mama, please, can I have prayer? Talking to Jody. Because you don't know Jody's voice. So when you get into prayer, you have to establish the test. When you say, I'm calling the Father to speak to the Father, Amen. you then have to know the voice of the Father such that when he answers, you know you are speaking to ah, the Father. Teaching good, Papa. Many of you have been speaking to other beings in heaven, thinking you are speaking to God. Because you don't know his voice. OJ picks up the phone. Hello? Hello? Mama, can I please have prayer? There's no idea what you are asking for. You can ask something that can only be done by God. But your phone call ends up in the hands of angels. And the angels are saying, what is this person talking about? You have to establish the destination of the prayer. You have to be, to be, to be familiar with the voice of the person that you are speaking to. Such that when someone else answers that voice, that phone, you will know this is the wrong person. Amen. Many of our prayers have been answered by wrong worlds, wrong beings, because we don't know the voice of that person that we are trying to talk to. So knowing God's voice is very important. Amen. Thank you, Papa. Tell three people you have to know the voice of God. 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 Yes. So, your quality in prayer is determined by knowing the destination. Amen. Like I said, there are many destinations. You are one destination. Your prayer can lend to you. Your prayer, sit down. Your prayer can lend to you. Your prayer can lend in the hands of the devil. Your, your prayer might not, your prayer can be going to God. I, I remember when we were having landlines in the past. You would call 33084 and you put on your ear. Grr, grr. Uh, hello, with the landline now, if you don't really know the person that you're calling, you might have, you might have to ask. I want to speak to Mama Bakasa. Is this Mama Bakasa's house? And they will tell you, ah, wrong number. But when you check on your dials, 
You didn't tell a wrong number. You dealt the right number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there is an interception that happened. Yeah. Or you can be, the, with our landlines especially, you can be in the middle of the phone call with your wife. And you hear another man saying, Hey, Ukuti! Hey! You tell this, sir. Hey. So another man is now talking on your phone. But you were talking to your wife. It means the phone has been intercepted. Amen. So prayer is like a phone call you are calling God. Can be intercepted. Prayer can be intercepted. Now, to eradicate interception of prayers, they had to introduce mobile phones. And at times, right now, your mobile phone can be intercepted when you are calling someone. But depending on the quality. You find that, I don't want to mention networks, I was about to. I don't want to mention networks. You find that when you are using a certain network, it has got lesser interceptions than another network. It shows you the network with lesser interceptions. It has got more quality. But you find it is expensive. That's right. Amen. So you pay more money to have quality call. Or you have to choose to pay lesser money for, it, for, 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 for calls that can be intercepted. Amen. So when your prayers are intercepted, it means they are of lesser quality. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Amen, Papa. I don't know if I'm talking to someone in this place. Uh -huh. You know, you don't want to be deep in revelation like this and you feel like you're talking to a few people. You want to feel like every son and daughter of yours is getting you. Yes, because Papa. when you master what I'm telling you, you are going to turn your life around. Uh -huh. Power. Look at Daniel. Look at Daniel. Look at Daniel. He went to pray. And the Bible says his prayer was answered, but it was intercepted by demons. An answered prayer can be intercepted. It had to take him 21 days of fasting for that prayer to come, meaning there is something that he applied wrong, principle-wise, when it comes to prayer. The first time he prayed, had he applied the right principle the first time, he would not have fasted 21 days. So the time you spend in prayer can be more because you applied less quality at the beginning. When you pray and you apply less quality and your prayer is intercepted, it will require you to pray more days and fast more days in future. Amen. Amen. But these are issues that can be dealt with from the beginning. There is no need for you to pray and there is delay and you fast. You can pray now and receive now. Amen. Thank you, Papa. The time you spend in prayer has got a lot to do with whether you know the voice of the person you are speaking to. You have to know. Sit down. You have to know. Let's say Jani goes at work. And it Jani wakes up in the Jani is married to one wife, got two daughters. Jani goes to work. Jani, when he's at work, he normally calls his wife. Hey baby, how are you? Now, the same Jani with the same phone can call Bongi. But if you hear Jani's conversation with his, his first daughter Bongi, it's different from Jani's conversation with Poki. Jani has to re kind of reduce himself to a baby when he's talking to Poki. And he has to count a sound, uh, sound uh, very, very mature, but childish at the same extent when he's talking to Bongi. But sound very loving, caring when he's talking to the wife. Amen. But it's because when, I don't think Jani, when you go home and, and Poki answers the phone, you say, who am I speaking to? I think you know the voice of your daughters. Amen. So if I hear Jani calling and he's calling my Jani and for some reason Poki's playing games and Poki says, hello, hello daddy. And you say, uh, 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 is this pussy speaking to, talking to the wife? But the person is just say dead. It shows you are confused. Amen. So there are people who are visited by angels in their prayer room and they begin to worship angels. In the Bible, there is an, a, 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 a man who saw miracles being done by Paul and they knelt down. Oh. You have to know God Amen. so that you speak to God. You have to know the angels. So that you take your prayers where angels need to have your prayers. You have to know the Holy Spirit. You don't, you know communion. Communion means when you are in deep sleep and some, you feel something is entering you, getting out. You feel like there's someone who has entered the room. But this someone is beyond a, a flesh. They are beyond blood. They, they enter you and they get out. They take away stress. It's never Jesus. It's never God. It's the Holy Spirit. Because you only commune with the Holy Spirit. So be careful of calling Jesus the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit, Jesus, in God, Jesus. They are one person, but very different. They are one person. That's why they are a tripartite being. It means three people in one. Amen. Saying God, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit does not mean they are one person. Jesus says, it I'm a son of God. 
The Holy Spirit says that I'm the Spirit of God. God says I'm the Father. So I, I know you have been confused a long time about you. who really is God. Are they really one? Is it? They are one in the sense that they can't function differently. If you call God to, work, to come and deliver you, you have to do it in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the oneness. That's why when God was operating by himself in the past, there was war. And Jesus came in his 33 years dispensation and he died. And he said, I have to go so that another one comes. So if Jesus and the Holy Spirit are just the same, why did he say I have to go so that another one comes? So know the voice of Jesus. Amen. So that way you need Jesus. Know the voice of the Holy Spirit. So that way you need the Holy Spirit. Know the voice of God. Know the voice of angels. Know the voice of demons. Know the voice of the devil. Know prayers that affect you. That have got nothing to affect with anyone. Do you know right now some of you here, you don't even need God to hear your prayer. You need your prayer to go and touch a person who has got your testimony. A person. Not God. A person. Your prayer has to move as a force and remove this doubt that is on that person to come to you. And you work together or they marry you or they give you your blessing on your testimony. A person. What you are praying for, most of you, or, or all of you, but some of the things you are praying for, have got nothing to do with God. They have got something to do with a company. You have to pray that an opening happens in a company. An opening. Praise the Lord. Amen. So destination of prayer improves the quality identifying or establishing the destination of your prayer improves the quality. When you are praying to the unknown God, you only begin to answer when you know him. So if you know him after 30 days, that's when he will answer. So that's why he's saying you ask, but don't receive, because you did not ask. Amen. Time in prayer. In the quality in prayer. The more the quality, the lesser the time. The better you establish the person you want to speak to and know their voice. I know God's voice. You know when I'm in prayer and I'm praying, I know this is God speaking. This morning I went into prayer before I came here. I knelt down. My intention was to commune with the Holy Spirit and I come here. And I could feel that I'm not communing fully because my body is not paying attention. So I had to start disciplining my body. And I told the Holy Spirit, help me that my body is in subjection so that I can... I was saying to the Holy Spirit, I'm hearing God, but I can't hear him clearly. Do you know what it means not to hear God clearly? Or you don't even know how to hear God? I was hearing him, but not clearly. God talks. Kutons, what this is God speaking? He's coming closer to my ear to say, Munya, go and do this, this, this in church, but today don't do this. And I said, I can't hear what God is saying. But I was not talking to God. Because how can I tell God when I can't hear? I have to tell that which is in me, the Holy Ghost. I can't hear the Father. Can you help me establish the location? Menos I'm going to the opening happened. Then God said, I was saying, God, God. Do you know the voice of God? So that when the devil comes with a car, you know this is the car from the devil. Meant to take your life with an accident. Do you know the voice of God? So that when God, the devil says, I'm answering your prayer, you know this is the devil and it's not God. When Jesus was hungry, bread came with Satan. Ah, you are not hearing me. When Jesus was hungry and fasting, bread came with Satan, not, the, not God. It's the devil who said change and eat. So your bread can come with Satan. It takes someone who knows the voice of God to say, this is the devil. Jesus was told by the devil, worship me, I'll give you everything. Amen. So your everything can come from Satan. Amen. Everything, your breakthrough can come from the devil. Amen. You have to know whether you're worshiping God or whether you just worship the devil. Jesus, Papa. You don't need to give your soul to the devil or be a Satanist to worship the devil. When Jesus was tempted to worship the devil, was he in Satanism? He was fasting. Help us, Papa. The realm of the spirit has got interceptions. Has got disturbances. Has got beings that are not of God that want to make sure that your prayer when you pray to God. Go to say, what was she saying? I couldn't hear. But the network was not clear because of the devil. Establish the network. Work hard to clear it. Study the word. Improve your meditation. Think the word. Don't think problems. Think the word. 
Speak the word. Don't speak problems. The more you acquaint your spirit, your soul, and your body to the word of God, by thinking it, by speaking it, by meditating it, by walking it, when you get into prayer, you already have got an established network communication. You will never receive 24 hours of free calls from CLC when you've got a Vodacom line. Amen. You receive the benefits from Vodacom. So walk with God. He is your Vodacom. So that you can receive free calls from Vodacom. What in us is on the same phone. It's not a dual SIM. You remove Vodacom SIM. Where's a COC? You remove COC. Where's a MTN? You remove MTN. Where's a ETA? Tomorrow you put Vodacom. By the time you remove Vodacom, a message is coming in to say you just have received uh, one hour, three minutes to call Vodacom to Vodacom. But there's an MTN line. Will you see the message? So are you going to say God didn't answer? Or you are the one who put the wrong line? Power. Oh, yes. Many times God answers our prayers, but when you wrong line, the line can be frustration. Oh, yes. Yeah. And when people keep praying amiss, I don't know why if people pray amiss and they get frustrated, they think not coming to church is the solution. I don't know where they get that concept. The moment you don't come to church, what is a CLC line when you are a Vodacom subscriber? Yeah, Expect so. nothing from Vodacom, not because Vodacom is not answering. Let's say you buy a Vodacom line. You choose 120 rand. Have you ever tried to make that call that makes you want to take a bath first before you do it? Scott, you know, I want to take a bath and eat. And you choose 120. Maybe you want to speak to your wife. She's far away. You are ready. You get what I'm saying? As you just you go and bath, and as you are bathing, your child takes your phone and removes your line. Vodacom and put Celsi. You go in there and you go to your wife. Wama blankets, wama pyjama, wajigawa guta. You are now you now dial honey. Could I insufficient funds? Ha! Could I insufficient funds? Could I in, do you really have insufficient funds? No, there is a wrong line. So we are not accessing God's blessings not because they are not there, but the devil is intercepted to remove a chip that has got our blessings and put a chip that has got nothing to do with God. Acquaint yourself with the word of God. Fill yourself with the word of God to make sure wherever you are, you are used, you are charged up. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to push this so that I, 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 I come to, to conclusion. Let's go to number, what's, what number is it? Five. Number five is the last one in the segment of definition of prayer. Before I can go to why then should we pray. Because I've taught you about prayer. So I, I'm sure you want to know why, why should we pray. Okay. So let, number five, let's talk about prayer itself. I've said a lot of things. Prayer itself, there's a right way to pray. I've talked about it and there's a wrong way to pray. Right way to pray attracts God, heavenly beings. Wrong way to pray attracts the devil. God answers the right way only. God answers the right way only. And demons intervene when you pray in a wrong way. So when you pray in a wrong way, your situation is likely to get worse. Your situation is likely to get worse. When you pray in a wrong way. When you are praying, you go into prayer. When you go into prayer, there are principles that are very, very important that you should know. Principle number one, be confident. We are now talking about subject number five, prayer itself. Be, when you get into prayer, be confident. Be confident of yourself that you are praying and God is hearing. So be confident in yourself. Doubt does not begin with doubting God that God is not answering. It begins with doubting, ah, did I really pray in the right way? So be confident from today that every time you go into prayer, you are delivering, you are praying in the right way. Number three, be confident that God hears you. Never think there are certain people that are heard by God and there are certain people that are never heard by God. So develop that confidence to know that God hears you. Tell yourself he hears you more than anyone else on the earth. Develop that confidence. You don't wake up with that confidence. You develop it. Develop confidence that God hears me more than anyone. If I don't pray, I'm jeopardizing my family, I'm jeopardizing my society because God hears me 
better than he is another person. Be confident that God is in the business of answering prayers 24-7. This can sound very light but very important because many people are questioning whether God answers prayers. Be confident that God is answering prayers 24-7 and be confident that it's his job. Be confident is answering prayers how many times a day? 24 7. If God is busy answering his, my prayers, why are my prayers not being answered? If it's his job, no, it's his job. I want you to take note of that. No, it is God's job to answer prayers. Improve the quality of your prayer by never allowing yourself to be called for prayer. Improve the quality of your prayer by never allowing yourself to be called for prayer. Always be there for prayer. Always be praying. Don't pray because there's a prayer program. Next week. Because there's a prayer program next week. So always be in prayer. Never be called for prayer. Amen. Know this. I want you to look at me. Write that and finish. I want you to look at me when you're done with that. Right. Can I continue? I said never be called for prayer is never allow any leader, any person to call you for prayer. Always be in prayer. Know also that you are never called to be prayed for. Know that God never called you to be here on earth to be prayed for. You were never called to be prayed for. You were never called to be laid hands. When a man of God is laying hands on people, he's seeing a deficiency. He's seeing a problem. The only reason a man of God should lay hands is for impartation. But if I lay hands because there are people that are sick, it means I'm doing that because there's a problem. So deal with the problem so that you stop being laid hands to get solution. So know that no one has been called by God here to be laid hands. But know that you are called to lay hands. No, you are never called to be prayed for. But know that you are called to pray to God. A human being is created by God to pray to God. Not to be prayed for by God. You praying to God is very, very important. Because it establishes the relationship that you have with the Father. If you don't pray to God, know that God does not pray. So it depends on human beings to pray. God does not pray. The only God who prays is the God who comes in flesh, Jesus. That's why Jesus came as a man and as a man he prayed. So a man ought always to pray. That's why God who came as a man prayed. But God as a spirit does not pray. It's you who prays. So always be in prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I'm addressing prayer itself. Prayer is conversation with God. Prayer is conversation with God. Amen. It's not necessarily shouting yeah, which is important. But you also need to ask yourself, when was the last time you had a conversation? How are you, Father? And you hear him saying, I'm fine. How are you, my child? Say, I'm very, very well. I'm just in this prayer to say thank you. Amen. He says, is it? Do you know it's, a lot, it's been a long, long time since you had said thank you. I'm sorry, God. Can you teach me so that I appreciate you? I tell you, it's my pleasure. Where do you think you are encountering challenges so that we don't have a strong relationship? Don't be in a rush. Think. That's God speaking. You can con converse with God. Con you don't. So every time you need to go, Father, I pray. Oh my God, I pray. God, you have to answer my prayer by fire. Oh God, kill all my. No, no, no. no. Amen. The Bible says when the prodigal son left and he came back, the prodigal son. When he left and he came back, when his father saw him, 
The prodigal son represents you. The father represents God. When his father saw him, meaning when God saw him, he ran. So God can run to you. He embraced him. And he kissed him. When was the last time, not the last time, have you ever been kissed by God? He stands, one my kiss. That's my papa. I don't read the Bible. I apply it in my life. If the prodigal son could be kissed, why not me? And look at the time he kissed him when he was lost. What more when you are close to him? I story kiss. He told me French. Power. 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 I don't want to ask you when the last time you, was ki- you were kissed by God. Because you have never been kissed. I want to teach you that God can kiss you. I want to teach you that God can hug you. Oh yes. The Bible said when he came a prodigal son, he had tattered clothes. And God gave him an expensive jacket. I want you to know God can clothe you. Amen. No, it is his job. No, he has got pleasure doing that. Stop looking at it as burdening God for him to provide for you. He loves it. He loves it. Kuma, imagine I know all, all the time when I say imagine God, you think of an old Madala with white beard. Imagine that old Madala running to you. So much love, old Madala with white beard in the gown as if you fall running to his child. Have you ever imagined yourself in that position where God loves you that much? That's why you're not being answered. You don't know the love of God. You don't know he loves you that much. Good, Papa. You think God is, fight, is busy fighting you not to receive your answers? <laughs> Converse with him. Amen. I your prayers are now too spiritual even for God himself. Who is the spirit? <laughs> too spiritual. <laughs> This one is praying. Ah, give them time to finish. Those are later. You are now too spiritual. Paul don't, Jayaka, don't, don't be overly righteous. No, you will make mistakes. And when you make mistakes, go to your father and tell him, Dad, I made a mistake. Can you help me? If I can forgive my child, what more God? Do you know one day I sat down there, I said, but I, I was watching news and someone had raped a child. And I said, but if someone does this to my child, I would kill them. God said, really? They said, no. Lord, I think I would be heartbroken, but I would want them to rot in jail. The Lord said, but death is better than them rotting in jail. They said, wow. I will forgive them. And God said, imagine if you can forgive a maid that always raped your child. What more me to you? You don't know God forgives you. You don't know God loves you. That's why you are easy busy cursing yourself. You think you deserve to be punished because you sinned. Not knowing that he who punishes does not even look at your sin. He's looking at another opportunity to say, get better, get better. When you get into prayer without that confidence, without the confidence of knowing that when you sin, God forgives you, you are praying amiss. Paul says, come boldly, boldly, come boldly, come boldly to the throne of grace. It means you might feel I don't deserve to come because I'm dead. It means you might feel I don't deserve to come because I fornicated. I don't deserve to come because I committed adultery. But Paul is saying put that aside and come with boldness. As someone who never did anything. Boldness. So when you don't have boldness it means you are not confident. Be confident. Be confident. He's answering prayers. Busy. Not just answering prayers. When the Lord told me this yesterday and he said, I'm busy answering my prayers. I said, Aibo, what about the prayers of people that are not being answered? So what's happening when you're answering prayers? And the Lord said, they didn't ask. Why should we pray? Write that down. Why should we pray? The reason why I'm introducing the why we should we pray segment is because it will give you confidence to know why you should pray. Is this making sense? I'm going to give you reasons so that they benefit you to know why you should pray. Praise the Lord. Why should we pray? Number one, he is one of the biggest reasons that you did not know why you should pray. It gives God glory.
John 14, verse 13 to 14. John 14, verses 13 to 14. I want us to read it together. John 14, verse 13 to 14. One, two, three, go. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Let's take it one more time. One more time. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do so that the Father will be glorified. If I don't do it, you won't be glorified. And if you see me not doing it, it's because you did not ask. So you asking God is not a burden. When you ask God, you are creating an opportunity for Jesus to answer. And when he answers, you are creating an opportunity for God to be glorified. Amen. And God is greedy when it comes to his glory. He can share everything except his glory. Everything. He shared his son. Not his glory. So when you hear him saying that the Lord may be glorified in the son because he answered his prayer, it means you can go to hell for not asking. Marudu, you didn't give me, I didn't receive enough glory because you didn't ask. And when you didn't ask, I could not answer. And I didn't receive my glory. I know when I said uh, the, uh, God is going to receive glory when you pray. I know you thought our prophet is, is meaning when we lift up our hands and we say glory to God. That's one way of giving God glory. But the other way that God really wants is when you pray and ask. Ask for how many things? Ask for how many? Let's continue to verse 14, Kudra. If you ask, anything. if you ask, anything. if you ask, anything. if you ask, anything. in my name, <laughs> if you ask, how many things? Anything. If you don't have a shoe, you didn't ask. If you asked, you were asking maybe to yourself. Jesus saying, if you ask anything, I hate people, not I hate. I want to correct people who say, don't be in the business of asking God all the time. There is the scripture saying you can ask anything. You can ask what? Anything. So what you don't have is probably you asked a miss or you never asked. Amen. And Jesus saying, if you ask anything in my name, that I will do so that the Father may receive his glory. That is a God who answers prayers. Imagine what will happen to the glory of God if you come here and hold this microphone and you say, brethren, I want to tell you that I've been a lodger for all my life, but I've bought a house, a, a, a 24-bedroom house, cash. Imagine what that will do to the glory of God. Do you, think, do, do you think God is glorified more when you lift up your hands and you say glory to God or when you say, guys, listen to my testimony? Testimony. Oh, yes. Power. That's why the devil is in the business of fighting testimonies. Yes. He will make sure you will never testify. Because he knows testimony causes glory. Oh. Testimonies cause what? Glory. Saga, sit down, brethren. So don't fool yourself and think that when you are very prayerful and you're not, you're not receiving answers, you take it as a certain way of being spiritual. God is allowing me to suffer because he wants to teach me something. Amen. Two years you are still being taught. If you are in grade 5 for two years, do I taught my dog a special class? Amen. Grade 5, two years. That's a special class. Yes. Do you have grade 5 for one year? Yes. Why are you grade 5? Why are you not being promoted to grade 6? Why are you not being promoted to grade 6? Because you are spiritually intelligent. Amen. Five years, you are a lodger. Same class. We're in the same grade for five years. If you have been a lodger for ten years, it means you are in the same class. Power. Teaching good, Papa. And yes. I want to break that religious thought that you have, where you thought, ah, you know, it, God, it's okay for us to be like this as long as we're praying to God. God is saying, when you pray to me, I answer. And when I answer, it's because glory will come to me because of your testimony. Yes. This is a teaching to you that the highest level of attacking the glory of God by the devil, the highest way, way, the highest way of attacking testimonies 
by the devil in the church is attacking the testimony department. The testimony department. If you see your church used to have so many testimonies and I could decrease, it doesn't mean God is no longer there. It just means God is no longer answering prayers. And he's not answering prayers because people in there are no longer praying. Or if they are praying, they are just praying in the same way in a long, long time. So the devil is used. He now can intercept. Now can intercept. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you ask for anything. So why should we pray? Because it gives glory to God. How does it give glory to God? That you ask. That which you ask, I will do. And how do you ask? You ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. You ask in the name of Jesus. Give me verse 18, Kudra. You ask in the name of what? Jesus. How do you ask? And whatever you ask in my name. Whatever you ask in my name. That I will do. Amen. So there is nothing that you don't have to, that you don't ask that will be done. That I will do. That. So that which will be answered is that which you pray for. Amen. That which will be answered is that you asked. That, that, in the name of Jesus. Number two. Prayer. Why should we pray? Prayer fills or fulfills. Let's use fulfills. I'll explain. Fulfills human joy. Prayer fulfills human joy. John 16, verses 24. Prayer fulfills human joy. John 16, verse 24. Prayer fulfills human joy. When you are done, look at the screen. Look at that. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. <laughs> Patience, fruit of the spirit. Relax. Jesus is saying up to until now. Ah, Jan, imagine I, I call you and I say, come here, Jan. And I say, and I say, ah, Jan, and that son, up to now, you've asked for nothing. And you are a Christian. And every day before you go to sleep, you ask. And he's saying up to now, this is John 16, he's about to die. So this is probably the third year of his ministry and he's telling them, the three years I've been with you, you have asked for nothing. If this was in John 1 verse 5, we'll say, ah, it's at the beginning. John 6, John is the shortest. John 21. John 21. So it's the 16th October. So he's telling people at the end of the ministry that up to now. That's why he said up to. Amen. They are busy saying, oh Lord, Arthur, Lord, and he's saying up to now we have asked for nothing. Have you been asking yet you are not asking? Have you been asking yet you the, 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 I've said a lot of things. There are a lot of things that put you in a position where you think you're asking and you're not asking. When you consistently find yourself outside church, you're not coming to church, what's worker? You naturally, physically, you'll be weak. So when you get into the spirit, you are praying as a weak person. And when you ask, Jesus is saying, you asked, but you didn't ask. Because you're weak. So you need to be consistent in the things of the spirit. Up to now. Up to now. These are people who were there when he did a miracle at Cana. These are people who were there when Lazarus was resurrected from the dead. These are people who were there when, when Luke's mother got sick with fever and Jesus prayed for her. And she, these were people who were there when Mary Magdalene was not stoned because of the power that was in these men. These are people who were there when they heard him shouting, Lazarus, come forth. And he came out running. And they know, they know this man can pray. They have imitated some of his prayers by repeating his exact words. And he's saying up to now, you have asked for nothing. And take note. Up to now you have asked nothing in my name. So it means they probably were asking but not in his name. You have asked nothing in my name. 
You need to master this. You spend three hours asking nothing. You need to master this. Now let's continue. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Ask. You will receive that your joy may be full. Let me explain because I see a lot of you did not get it. Ask. You will receive that your joy may be full. It means joy has got levels. It's got, it's, look at the fuel tank. There's quarter tank. There's half tank. There's pagadai, pagadai. There's three quarter. There's full. If you ask, you receive. Your joy will be full. So for the tank that is in you of joy to operate at a full level, you have to receive. Ask and you receive. That's your joy. So what causes joy to be at the maximum level? Is receiving. If you don't receive, that's why you see you have no joy. You have no joy. No matter this kind of joy, the full tank joy, can never be reached by praying in tongues. Can never be reached by fasting. There are times that you feel sad and you feel bad that I've not been praying enough. And when you pray, you come out with joy, feeling good. Believe me, it will never be full. But Jesus said the fullness of joy is reached when your prayer is answered. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, brother. Don't take for granted answered prayers. Thank you, they make your joy to be full. Amen. Look at the gauge of your joy right now. Some of you is quarter. Joy is important to God. Joy. Joy is important to God. God is not, does not play when it comes to joy. God does not take it for granted when you play loud music in your house and you are dancing and you are shouting. He loves that. People think it's ungodly for you to play music in your house and you are dancing and you are cooking. You are playing gospel. They think, I oh, know you are being too, you know, they, they don't. There are people who are that judgmental. There are people who believe sadness makes God happy. Joy is yatawrobe. Ask our answer so that your joy your joy may be full. Ask you receive. So everything that you have not received right now is compromising the fullness of your joy. Amen. Everything Count the things that you have not received. Ujato na wati mutengi mako ispa kote. Amushto rina. Ne reserve yaka topera. Reserve joy. Reserve tank of joy. It's now empty. Wakuto no paka. Joy. Yaka nti bata scripture yakuri joy me before. Itengi ke. Not only reserve, not only muru mo agasha magoda yaguti not only onaropa feeling station guti derive joy. Kono zidu kashka 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 iri joy until the tank is full. Wona yaku batu amota unona na noeva chiche kaso. Dakuwa kumoteta more joy. The fuel gauge of joy is prayers being answered. So if you master the art of your prayers being answered, you have to learn to pray more so that the more you pray, the more you are answered. Ay, 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 God. Pray the right way so that you receive. The devil can deliberately push you and make you not to pray in the right way because he knows if you don't receive, you live a life that, that doesn't have joy. Ask. And you will receive. Ask. And you will receive. Ask. And you will receive. So asking can only be measured by receiving. Amen. If you have not received. That's why Jesus is saying until now. You have asked for nothing. Amen. In my name. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Your joy has to be full. Amen. 
Your joy is to be what? Full. If your joy is not full, you are going to kick everything in your way. Your wife, your children, your dog, your cat. There are people who have said that they don't even need to buy red poison. Their anger chases rats away. <laughs> everything in your way. You don't kick. So come back on. That's why I'm not time. Anger that chases rats away. When you find your house has got rats and mosquito and cockroaches, don't be too angry. It's a peaceful house. But that's the second number of reasons. Kuto ne, kuto ya kuto chaga chika, panto chaga chika, kuta ora kuti zuguya kuto chaga chika, panto chaga chika. There are people who don't have to buy red poison, cockroach poison, because there is no food in the house. If you want to kill cockroaches, be on a hunger strike. Empty your fridge, empty your drawers, and the cockroaches come for, for food. So if you are not careful, your joy can be emptied that there is no joy, there is no food, there is no peace in the house. And even the animals, they will leave. Joy. You are known to be angry for the past three years. Anger. Your kids, when they hear, they, there are millions of cars in South Africa, but they know the idling of your car. That this is dead coming. They leave the lounge running to their bedrooms, fearing for their lives. Because even if they do nothing wrong, the dead who is angry because they have no joy will kick their children. Joy. I'm a man full of joy. Those to keep seeing me as a man of God. But dance on receiver. I'll dance with you. I'll dance with you. <laughs> joy. Even if God joys, you could have mama and do not jump up and bed and do not do a second in the house. You know, mama, I can eat and don't go to go. She could do a second in the house. Those are not it. Joy. Even oh, yeah. me, yeah. yeah. you joy, no way, I can have a bond. Sitting good, Papa. Who are on the act of where I know? Oh, no, Magara, I'll do about a bata, she could see Cassica. They want sex. What happened to joy? What happened to being happy without you wanting sex? What happened to you holding your wife's hand and you go out and you are taking a walk oh, yes. and you are giving a confidence that I love you and nobody else? Yes. Amen. What happened? What happened? Ah. Power. What happened? Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, but you, you do wrestling with your wife. You joke with your wife. You crack jokes with your wife. Don't be a father to your children and a father to your wife. Amen. One of the things that gives women confidence is them knowing that this man is mine. When you are walking and you are going to spy and you are walking and you are not holding a hand, oh, yes. she is likely to think that there is someone that you want to think that you are her sister. Oh, yes. <laughs> if you want to tell everybody that I'm your wife, why are you not holding my hand? Oh, Is yes. my hand so heavy that it can't be touched? <laughs> ah. Ah. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, Papa. But I want to tell you this. It only happens when there is joy in the house. You are too angry. Tell your neighbor you are too angry. You are too Look angry. at the other one. Say, especially you. Especially you. Oh yes! Ah ah! Power! Anger, anger compromises the quality of your prayer. Amen. Anger. Work your joy. What did I say? Work your joy means do things that you can do to make yourself happy, even if there's no need for you to be happy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Be happy. Be happy.
Give me uh, Hebrews 12 verse 2. That's number 3. This also. This also number 3. Why should we pray? Yes. Hebrews 12 verse 2. I want to show you with this one. When I'm encouraging you to, to have joy. Here is what I want you to see. Jesus himself loves joy. <laughs> Jesus loves. It sounds wrong if I say Jesus loves joy. But what does he say? That's what he says. He says. Issue. It does prove the scripture. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. Who for joy? Who for joy? Who yes. for joy? Yes. Who for joy? That was set before him. Endured the cross. So he did not feel the pain of the cross, but he was seeing the joy after. Ah, ah, ah. Bridget, Papa. Oh, yes. They were nailing him on the cross. He could not feel the pain. He ignored the pain. They were spitting and embarrassing him. The Bible says he endured the cross. He endured the, the, the despising of the shema. He endured all that because of the joy that was set before him. The joy. The joy. The joy. The joy. The joy. Uh -huh. He knew if I die, my children are going to go out and have dinner and enjoy the dinner. Oh, yes. He knew there was joy that was following after. Uh -huh. He knew if I die, my children are going to drive good cars. Uh -huh. He saw the joy that was set before him. Yes, sir. He knew if I get killed, my children are going to live in divine health. Yes, sir. You have to work for the joy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ah, 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 ah. Power. You know when I master these scriptures, never do I apologize for looking good. Amen. Because I know Jesus died for the joy that he was seeing. Yes, he knew if he dies, I'm going to live a good life. Power. Am I talking to somebody in this place? Yes, Papa. You have to have confidence that God wants you to be joyous uh -huh. in your finances. Yes, Papa. He wants you to be joyous yes, sir. in your workplace. Ah. Yes, sir. Gone are the days where you go to your workplace miserable and coming out miserable. Uh -huh. I fill your workplaces with joy, 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 uh -huh. joy, uh -huh. joy. Power. My God, who for the joy that was said before him? Joy. He died so that you go to heaven, which is important. But the name of scripture, he died for joy. 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 So that when someone who is here, when they are going to sleep, they go to sleep in a joyous mood. Uh -huh. When they are waking up, they wake up in a what? In a joyous mood. When they get into their kitchen, they get into the kitchen in a joyous mood. Not getting into a kitchen and your kitchen is like a reminder of what you don't have. Gone are those days. You are going to enjoy your life in the name of Jesus. Shout joy. Joy. Shout it joy. Joy. You have to learn on your own, in your room, with no reason to jump and shout. You just begin to jump and shout and celebrate. Oh, yes. Work your joy. Work your happiness. Work your joy. Jesus died because he showed the joy. I thought that was not enough for Jesus to die. Joy. But he's saying I died because I saw the joy. The joy set before him. I'll never be poor in my life. Amen. I receive that. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. This is the confidence that you need to have in Christ Jesus. That he died for you to be victorious. He died for you to overcome every obstacle that is set ahead of you. Go and live a life of joy. Go and live a life of joy. Go and live a life of joy. I fill your houses with joy. I fill your children with joy. I fill your marriages with joy. <laughs> oh yes! Hey! 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 I will never be poor 
in my life. Uh, I will never be sick in my body. Yes, I will never be depressed in my life. Uh, uh, I am full of joy, 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 joy. Joy. Many people don't know that joy opens provision. Uh -huh. <laughs> joy opens provision. Yes. Every day in the morning you are waking up sad, uh -huh. closing the provision. Oh, yes. When you let to wake up and you are joyous, you are going to open provision for that day. Amen. That's why David said, this is the day that the Lord has made. Ah, ah, we shall rejoice. 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 Ah, Power, power, power. Joy. Am I talking to somebody in this place? Yes, sir. Learn to wake up and you overcome fear by being joyous in your life. Amen. Have joy in your spirits. Uh -huh. Have joy in your hearts. Yes, sir. When you wake up, don't think about the problems in the morning. Speak joy, speak joy, speak joy. Ah, ah. Yeah. I want you to do something early in the morning tomorrow. Wake up around 4, 4.30. Set your alarm. Don't get out of bed. Set your alarm, switch it off and listen. You're going to hear birds of the air. Singing. Don't think they are singing because they have caught a worm. They know if they celebrate before catching a worm, their celebration will lead them to catch a worm. Ah, ah. Ah. Listen to the birds of the air. They worship him and they are just before before they catch anything, they are already celebrating. Joy opens for provision. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, Papa. When you wake up, don't allow problems after problem after problem after problem after problem. Problems are there. You will never end them. Amen. You will never end them. Learn to enjoy your life. Yes. Starting with where you are. Yes, Papa. Starting with the shoe that you have. Amen. Starting with the jacket that you have. Yes, uh -huh. Starting with the food in the house. Uh -huh. yes, Papa. If you say I will celebrate when there is food in the house, you will never celebrate. Amen. It's celebration that brings food in the house. Uh -huh. If you are not celebrating because there is divorce in the house, you will never celebrate. Uh -huh. You need to celebrate to stop the divorce. Uh -huh. Yes, Papa. Shut your neighbor and tell your neighbor, come on, you have to learn to celebrate. You have to learn to celebrate. Come on, help them, help them, help them. Shake them like you're about to shake them. Tell them you have to learn to celebrate. You have to learn to celebrate. Learn to celebrate. Ah! Oh, yes! Learn to wake up and you sing songs of praise. Am I talking to you? Yes. Don't allow problems to put you deliberately in a sitting position where you are thinking of problems, where you are thinking of problems as you are thinking. Am I talking to you? Uh -huh. You have to learn to be joyous. Uh -huh. When you are finding no ways to make yourself joyous, start singing beautiful songs. Yes. The Bible says, sing hymns so that you can be joyous in the Lord. Uh -huh. When you wake up in the soul in the morning, start singing. Jesu makanaka. Makanaka. Jesu makanaka. Oh, Jesus, my Kanaka. Jesus, my Kanaka. Oh, Jesus, my Kanaka. Jesus, my Kanaka. Jesus, my Kanaka. Oh, Jesus, my Kanaka. Jesus, my Kanaka. Jesus, my Kanaka. Oh, Jesus, my Kanaka, my Kanaka, Jesus, my Kanaka, Jesus, 
God, am I talking to somebody here? You, you don't need reasons to have joy. You don't need reasons. Work out your own joy. Work out. Don't wait for other people. Don't wait for a husband, a wife. Thank you, praise and worship. Don't wait for your husband, your wife, brother, sister, a good job, increase in salary, seasons, all this to make you happy. You are only known to be happy once a year during Christmas. You are going to die young. Sadness kills. Do you know the Bible says laughter is better than medicine? So it means when you've got a headache, you can laugh it off. And it means when you've got a headache, it means you are not laughing enough. Because what I'm listening here, if laughter is better than medicine, it means laughter and sickness don't coexist. You can take away the sickness by love. Prayer removes afflictions and sicknesses. This is the second from last. I'm going to look at the last one right now before we finish. Prayer removes afflictions and sicknesses. James 5, verse 13 to 14. Prayer removes afflictions and sicknesses. James 5, verse 13 and 14. I want us to look at it together. Let's read it together. One, two, three, go. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. <laughs> it's not saying let him pray. It says that if you are suffering, pray so that you come feeling good out of prayer. It's saying the answer to suffering is prayer. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. So, do we agree that prayer and suffering don't coexist? Amen. Prayer and suffering don't coexist. So, if you are suffering, you are not praying. If you are praying, you won't suffer. I'm going to say that prayer and suffering don't coexist. Is anyone among you suffering? Question Let him pray. Is anyone among you suffering? Question marking. Let him pray. So, the answer to suffering is prayer. Yes, Papa. The answer to suffering is prayer. So it means you can't find a prayerful place in suffering. Amen. Yes, Papa. And you find a person who suffers, not prayerful. When you really see people who are suffering praying, they are now praying because they are suffering. Because the Bible actually says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Amen. 
So it's normal for people to suffer then begin to pray. But he's not saying this is an advice, that way to suffer then pray. He's saying the solution to your sufferings is prayer. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. If you want to have joy and cheerfulness, sing psalms. Sing psalms. Learn to sing. You are not in praise and worship. I know your voice is bad. Mine is not good either. But I sing to the Lord. Because yes. I know God does not qualify based on the voice. He qualifies based oh, on yes. how cheerful your heart is. Ah! Oh, wow. Is anyone suffering? So prayer removes sufferings. Amen. If you are suffering financially, pray. Amen. If you are suffering financially, pray. Amen. If you are suffering business-wise, pray. If your, your children are suffering, teach them to pray. Amen. 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 Prophetic ministries are very bad. They have now taught people that if you suffer, be prayed for. And that's not what the Bible said. Amen. Says, is anyone suffering? Let him pray. 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 Not let him pray for. Pray. Look at your neighbor in the eyes. Help me to preach. Tell them, pray. Pray. Look at another one. Say, it's been a long time since you prayed. It's been a long time since you prayed. Teaching good, Papa. Give me verse 14. Tell your neighbor, pray. Pray. That's the answer to your sufferings. That's the answer to pray. your suffering. Pray. That's the solution to your calamities. That's the solution to your calamities. Sit down. Look at that one. Is anyone among you sick? Do you, do you know when he's saying is anyone among you sick and he, ask, and he puts a question mark? He's not expecting sickness among Christians. So he's not asking is anyone among you sick to give a solution of prayer. He's actually shocked. Is anyone among you sick? <laughs> is, is anyone among you suffering? A Christian who suffers. This is James. He knows that a Christian should not suffer. But if they suffer, let them pray. But if they learn to pray, they will never suffer. So he's saying, you are suffering because you don't pray. That's why he's putting a question mark. Is anyone among you suffering? So you have not been praying. Thank you, Papa. Is anyone among you sit? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him. Anoint him with the oil, blah, blah. But look at the solution to sickness. Prayer. So if you are sick, you have not been praying. At least with sufferings, you can pray and deliver yourself. But with sickness, you need deliverance. When you are now sick, you can't deliver yourself. You need someone to pray for. Send elders to pray for the person. Why can't you deliver yourself? Because at times, physically, you can't be in a position to pray. Maybe the minutes that are required for you to stand and pray and cast out, you are now weak. It's a fever. You are tired. So you need elders. But if you are sick and you still can pray, you can deliver yourself. Just a good thing. A Christian can deliver themselves. Yes. A Christian can heal themselves. Yes. So if you are sick and you still can pray, pray until you are healed. Amen. But I want you to take a, look, a close look at that, guys. Is anyone among you sick, suffering? Pray. Amen. Look at the solution. Pray. Amen. Pray. Amen. Hallelujah, church. Amen. Tell your neighbor, pray. pray. Right, I want to finish. Let's go to the last one. Tell your neighbor the presence of prayer. The presence of prayer is the absence of affliction. Is the absence of affliction. The absence of affliction. The absence of affliction. is the presence of prayer. Is the presence of. Prayer. Tell your neighbor prayer and afflictions don't coexist. Prayer and afflictions they don't coexist. Number five. Prayer gives access to life. Luke eighteen verse one. Prayer gives access to life. Luke 18 verse 1. Prayer gives access to life. I'm going to look at this. Then very soon we'll be done. Then he spoke. Luke 18. I, I hope I give you the right scripture. Luke 18 verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them. That a man ought always to pray. Yes. He spoke a parable to them. And he said a man ought always to pray. And not lose heart. There's another version that I want. I don't know if you have it. Go and look for a version that says a man ought always to pray and not faint. 
faint. But losing heart, let's put it in a, in a, in a physical terms. If I come to you and I make you lose your heart, what does it mean? It means you're dying. So a man ought always to pray and not lose heart. Oh, yes, thank you, Kodra. A man ought always to pray and not faint. It means prayer and fainting don't coexist. So if you are fainting, you are not praying. Yes, Papa. If you pray, you won't faint. So if you pray and you can't faint, a person fainting, they are losing life. It means prayer gives life. Prayer gives what? Life. life. And it's not you as a person who faints only. It's not just you as a person who faints. Your business can faint. Your marriage can begin to faint. Your children that used to be intelligent in school, you can see ah, they look like they are fainting. So the Bible is saying to avoid someone from fainting. A man ought, oh, not sometimes, always. So solution to fainting is prayer all the time. Prayer all the time. When you learn to pray all the time, you give life. And I want to, I want to show you how then life comes. Give me John 6 verse 63. I think I'm done here. Give me John 6 verse 63. Let me double check. Okay. Right, thank you, thank you. Look at that. I want to, to link the two scriptures. Look at that. Read it loud. One, two, three, go. Stop there. Start again. Stop there. It is there. Who gives what? Life. Where does life come from? Spirit. Do you see the spirit is got a capital letter S? Yes. To tell you it's God's spirit or God. So who gives life? God. Or the Holy Spirit. Amen. A man ought always to pray and not faint. When you are fainting, you have no life. And what gives life? God. Huh? A you, man ought always to pray and not faint. When you are fainting, you are losing life. Amen. And the Bible is saying it's the Spirit who gives life. So when you have no Spirit, when you have no Holy Spirit, when you have no Jesus, when you have no God, you lose life. So you faint. Oh my God. Let me put it across again. A man ought always to pray and not faint. So it's prayer that gives life. But here the Bible is saying it's the spirit who gives life. So it means it's prayer with the spirit. Or prayer invites the spirit. Or prayer invites God. Or prayer invites Jesus. When Jesus comes as you are praying, he gives life. So that which was fainting will not faint because he who gives life is present. So yes. prayer invites the life giver, Jesus. Oh yes. So when you find yourself fainting, it means the life giver, Jesus, is absent. Power. Sit down. Look at that one. Let's start from there. Pagan sit there. One, two, three, go. The words. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit in their life. They are spirit. So if a man ought always to pray so that they don't faint, if they don't faint, it means that which gives life is absent, which is Jesus. And Jesus is saying, by myself, I don't give life. What gives life on, 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 on where I am is the spirit and the words that I speak to you. They are life. The words. So what gives life at the conclusion is the words. Is the what? The words. Look at the end. The words that I speak to you are spirit and life. Jump the spirit so that you are not confused. Let's say the words are life. So God is saying the words I speak are life. And the Bible just said, a man ought always to pray, not faint. So when you are fainting, it means you are not hearing the word, which is life. Yes, Papa. Now, I will conclude. It means, if we agree, brethren, do we agree so far, that is the word, the words, not just the word, is the words that give life. Do we agree? Yes. So if you go into prayer, you can't come out with life until you hear the voice of God. Powerful. If you go and kneel down and you begin to pray, you will not come out with life until you hear what God has said. Because it's the words that God speaks to you. So every time God opens his mouth and he says, 
uh, Sharon, life is coming to you. The words. Uh, I was thinking, life is coming. Because it's the words that he speaks that give life. So it's a dangerous place to be to pray and you come out without hearing the voice. Powerful, Papa. Am I communicating? Yes, Papa. Now, watch yourself. How many times have you prayed and you came out and you didn't hear what God said? I think it's more often than not. Yes, Papa. You thought your words are enough. If I say, Father, hear me, I pray, bless me in Jesus' name, Amen. You took your, your, your carpet, uh, your, your outer, you leave. Now, it's being corrected, it's not enough. Because what gives life is the words. So every time you need to wait after you pray, now keep quiet. It goes to the establishment. But I think we're going to finish at five. Then it's not about that. But the Panachit established the destination. Now you have to know who you are talking to. Because who you are talking to, if I say, uh, where is that phone? If I, if I, if I say, ah, I miss my wife. Let's say I made a prayer retreat. I miss my wife. Let me call my wife. And I go to honey. And I hear the phone. It's answered, but there's no one speaking. Hello? Hello? Honey, is it you? Are you there? Is it you? Hello? And I can actually hear the birds from the other side. In the cars that are passing by from the other side. But I can't hear my wife's voice, but the voice has been answered. Do you think I won't get worried? That I can hear everything else, but my wife is not speaking. I'll begin to think something. The next time, if nothing has happened to her, if I call her, I'll say, you were worrying me. Why didn't you answer? And maybe she will even say, oh, no, I'm not the one who was with the phone. But here's what I'm trying to say. If you talk to someone and you don't hear their voice, that's not communication. So how many times have you prayed to God and you didn't hear his voice? He's talking to a silent person. When you speak to God, you then need to wait to hear what he says. To what you have said. Yes, Papa. Every time you go and pray and you say, hello God, hello. My problem is, Father, I want you, I, I'm on the same job for far too long. Oh Lord, I need you to help me. I was thinking if you give me a job that you can increase my salary by 12,000 by November. Lord, I'll appreciate in Jesus' name. Amen. What did he say? Does he agree to what you have just said? Does, da, da, is, you, is your request carrying life? Because the Bible did not say your words carry life. It says the words of God carry life. So if you just speak your words and you didn't hear the words of God, there's no life in your prayer because he didn't speak. Powerful. It is dangerous to pray and you didn't hear God. You have to hear him. Prayer is concluded by God, not by you. Prayer is introduced by you, but concluded by God. Amen. And it is also, is that fine? Yes. yes. No, no need to lay hands today. You know, God is laying hands on you now. Amen. Prayer. Go and practice this. You never need me to pray for you another day. You come to eat with me your testimony, your ice cream, your cake, your, your salad, your coke. Don't leave your tongue with Pray. Pray. You need to pray. Men ought always to pray. Always. After service, you need to pray. Men ought always. After church, you need to pray. Yes, Papa. Monday, I want it's my break. Oof. You know, we were church yesterday. Always. Amen. A break in prayer is a break in Jesus Christ. A break in prayer is a break in your testimony. Yes, a break Papa. in prayer is a break in your breakthroughs. Yes, a break in prayer is a break in your ever in your encounters with heavenly beings. Yes, a break in prayer is a break in God. Yes, Men ought always to pray. Yes. Sit down as I conclude. God's voice, God's words, give life. So Tain is an era of prayer. Hearing God, even if you don't hear what he said clearly, because what he says clearly is instruction. It will help you for instruction. But for life, just hear his voice. In the beginning, there was darkness. And God said, the moment the world heard his voice, there was light everywhere. The moment darkness heard his voice, there was light. People were suffering with hunger. 
The moment the five loaves and the two fish had the voice of God, they multiplied. So multiplication does not happen to people who are heard by God, but who don't hear God. Multiplication begins to happen when you hear God. What causes multiplication to happen is not your voice. It's God's voice. When the bread heard the voice of Jesus, it multiplied. Lazarus is in a tomb stinking. The sister even confirms that right now he has got a stench because it's four days. And Jesus said, they removed the stone. They removed. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he started hoping coming out. A dead body received life because it heard the voice. It heard the what? The voice. You need to hear the voice of God. And when I say hear the voice of God, there are so many ways you can hear the voice of God. Through his word, through his prophets, through dreams. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, because he's talking to people that are listening, sitting down. Yeah. Sitting down. So I'm talking about you consciously sitting down in prayer and you wait for God to speak and you say, I heard God. There will be life concerning whatever situation that you want to have life. Amen. Prayer gives life. Amen. Prayer gives life. Prayer gives life. Not just to you, to everything that belongs to you. Amen. Identify those things that you felt I was losing life there, 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 there. Go into prayer. Hear God concerning that matter. If you just hear the voice of God, there will be life in that situation. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Come on, we can celebrate Jesus better than that. Ah, 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 ah. Celebrate! Tell your neighbor there is life in my life. There is life in my life. There is life in my marriage. There is life in my marriage. There is life in my career. There is life in my career. There is life in my business. There is life in my business. The life of God. The life of God. The life of God. The life of Shout God. the life of God. The life of God. The life of God. The life of God. Is taking control of my life. Is taking control in my life. The life of God. The life of God. Is leading me to the right direction. Is leading me to the right. The direction. life of God. The life of God is healing me right now. Is healing me right now. The life now. of God. The life of God is bringing my testimony. Is bringing my testimony. If you believe it, put your hands together for Jesus in this place. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. For the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go and change our lives by prayer. Let's go and 